Hey guys, how you doing? So I'm going to be starting a project on the bug. It's going to be, I'm going to be trying to make A-arm suspension on the back of the bug. When I first started working on it, it had the, uh, the torsion suspension and I'd made a set of rear arms for that. Um, and that was pretty good, but I'll be honest with you, I hated the fact that as, it, as the suspension would move through, it would uh, change the camber. Kind of made it so that once you had designed a certain ride height, you couldn't really change that because if you did, your, your camber would change. Then I had made the decision to do away with the torsion tube and I made what I have now, which is I've got a, this piece here runs straight across the chassis. There's no, there's no angle to it whatsoever. It's completely, it's completely straight. And then I made a swing arm that pivots off of that. So now what happens is when the, when the suspension cycles, it goes up and down, there's absolutely zero camera change because it's at the, its pivot point is at a 90 degree. And, and I like that because now you can change the ride height, um, you can do whatever you want, and no matter what, the, the camber stays exactly the same, which is zero, because I set it up so that it's straight up and down. And then when I went away from the torsion tube, then I put on uh, coilover shocks, which is amazing compared to the, the torsions because you've got so much more flexibility in your spring rate and your amount of travel, because to a certain extent, you're limited on travel by how how much those torsions can twist. Then I worked on the front suspension. It had the beam. I I made the A arm front suspension, which I was I'm really happy with. So then I'm starting to switch to the back here, and now I bought some micro stub rear axles, and because I've got the micro stubs now, I need to redo the rear suspension, which in this situation would be remaking the rear swing arm. Now while I'm doing that, I also want to extend the wheelbase about two inches on either side. The reason I want to do that is when I made the A-arm front suspension, I made it a little bit wider than the beam suspension, which was fine, but now I want to match the rears to the front, so each side needs to go about two inches further out. And then in addition to that, when I was designing the rear suspension, um, I kind of fell victim to looking online and seeing what everybody else is doing, which is lengthening the wheelbase. So when I made the swing arm that's on here now, I had actually made it a couple inches longer. This bug is going to be on mountain trails, like lower speed, kind of skinny, a lot of tight corners, a lot of low traction situations, um, going up, going down, and whatnot. So what I decided is, I actually want to shorten the wheelbase a little bit, specifically in the rear, so that I can get the engine and tranny hanging a little bit more off the back. So that gets me to the point where I need to make a new swing arm that will be a little bit wider. It will be set up for the micro stubs, and it'll be shorter to shorten the wheelbase. I'm gonna, I'm gonna widen the wheelbase, and I'm gonna shorten the wheelbase. Now, with all that, I've decided that before I go that route, because I can, I can do that pretty pretty easily. There's not there's not all that much to making uh, swing arms, especially off of a straight beam. But before that, I'm going to tinker around and see if I can make an A arm rear suspension that seems like it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set some baseline measurements. I'm going to take some of my current suspension apart. I'm going to measure my ride height, I'm going to measure my travel, I'm going to measure my my wheelbase and my wheel width or my track width so that I know when I'm designing the new system what, what I had before. Um, and then I'm going to really kind of just as an experiment, I'm going to start fabbing up some of the A-arm lower control arm, like their attaching points at the chassis and I'm going to make the spindle in for the uh, micro stubs and then I'll tack some of that together and then I'll actually kind of jig it up in place and see if I can cycle some of it and that will just give me an idea of if, it, if it's something that I can do or if it just seems like it'll be too complicated. So what I've started doing is is I took some measurements off of this bracket because I want the brackets in the rear to be pretty similar because I'm going to order more of these 
Delrin um, bushings so that I can make this same uh, hinge joint in the back. So going off what I measured in the front there, I've drawn this up for the brackets for the rear. So I'll need eight of these, but I'm going to make four of them to begin with so that I can tack things in place and see how it, how it looks like it's going to work. So my original plan is to have the, uh, the Delrin pivot points here, one further forward. Then it's going to come together and I'm going to create, I'm going to build a spindle for the micro stubs where the lower control arm comes into the spindles on this end it's going to have himes. The reason I'm going to do that is with the himes I'll be able to adjust the toe a little bit. I won't be able to adjust it at this end because I'm going to have the Delrin bushings but the Delrin bushings are very strong, they're very cheap, they don't take up a lot of space so I like them but at this end because I want to be able to have some adjustability I'll have to do himes. And then what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make the lower control arm strong enough so that it can hold the twisting action of the rear tire under acceleration and braking without twisting. Then what I'll do is for my, for my upper link, I'd really rather not make an actual control arm, just make a link with himes on either end so that I can rotate it like a steering link to adjust my uh, camber.